So this will be bringing software-defined radio to the penetration testing community. Let's give our presenters a small hand of applause. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Jean-Michel, here is Harno. Uh, we'll present you a tool that uh, we, have been, we have been developing for, uh, for quite a while uh, to help pen testers to assess radio frequency uh, communicative equipment. So the first constatation we made was that more and more obje uh, connected objects are coming to the market. The status from Cisco is, and as you can see, it grows pretty fast. Uh, second thing, and that was the main, um, uh, the main topic that led us to, to develop that, uh, is regarding smart meters. The stat is from the US Energy Information Administration. Uh, the main risk with those devices is that the devices will be at your home, so you do have physical access to the device. Plus, it's provided for free. <laughs> the energy company is just giving you a device. Uh, and fraud is not the main issue with that. Uh, that's not what f the, the energy company uh, is fearing. What we fear is, to, is you to be able to compromise the firmware of those, uh, those smart meters and being able, for example, to shut down a whole neighborhood because they will produce energy and it cannot be stored, so the energy has to go somewhere. So if you shut down, you're just raising up the, the gap between what's produced and what uh, has been consumed. Uh, moreover, after we started the, our development, uh, we saw a draft from the NIST stating that basically there was a tool that was missing using a software-defined radio from HS Research uh, to do the RF analysis. And that was exactly what we were developing, so we decided to release the tool, and that's why we, we are here. So what are the challenges? Challenges with uh, radio frequency is that you have to face up multiple radio protocols. Um, for example, smart meters, you can have uh, smart meters communicating with uh, Zigbee, but you can also have uh, Hart, Dash 7, you name it. Uh, you also have to deal with multiple bands of frequencies. Most of the time you will face the ISM band, but still it goes from 453 megahertz up to 2.4 gigahertz. So it's still too wide to be able to deal with that with only one transceiver. And in addition to that, even though, for example, WM bus can, can, be, can transmit on the ISM band, it also has a proprietary frequency to transmit on. You also have multiple modulations, FSK, PSK, ASK, you name it. So it's pretty hard to deal with, uh, with a transceiver that has been hardwired. And you also have multiple bit rates. All those things make, make somehow difficult to, to deal with radio frequency in a, in a common way like we can do on traditional pen testing with Ethernet. Uh, and you also have multiple applicative layer. That's, for example, for the, uh, for the .15.4 protocol uh, on which Zigbee, Zigbee is based. Uh, this protocol just gives you the, the, the lower layers, but you, you can define your applicative layer on top of that, and Zigbee is one of that. Um, the existing tools to deal with uh, radio frequency so far that are quite close to what we are doing. You have the Obertooth from Michael Osman, but it's dedicated to Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy. So you're, you're somehow limited uh, with that. You also have the RFCAT from, uh, by Atlas of Doom, and this one is maybe the closest to what we, we are trying to, achi to achieve. But it's only compatible with a subset of chipcon-based chip dongles, so it's just a, a transceiver uh, which uh, is made to deal with ISM band, and you flash another firmware on it, and then you're able to deal with sub gigahertz ISM band and just configure it with a Python interactive shell. 2.4 gigahertz, I think Atlas is trying to develop it, but I don't know, uh, I don't think it's released yet, and it's still figuring out uh, which dongle it will use. 
And again, it just grabs you raw packet. You set the frequency, you set the bit rate, you set the modulation, the packet length, and then you just have raw packets. You don't have the, the understanding of upper layers. And for Zigbee, you have the happy mode, for example, that, is, that has been developed by Ryan Spears from Rival Loop Security. Fortunately, uh, right now, compu computers are going more and more efficient. So we can move from what has been done in hardware, move it to your CPU instead. And that's why we are dealing with software defined radio. It is basically a configurable local oscillator. No hardwire processing is done. You just, uh, just have a local oscillator, preamplificators, filters, and an ADC, an analogic to digital converter. It will just stream some raw digital samples to your computer and then your CPU, your CPU will do the rest. It comes from 20 bucks up to 10,000 bucks, maybe more. Uh, the compromise we found between the size of the appliance, the performance and the price is that you can just grab a, uh, a, uh, a software defined radio card from 300 bucks to 1,000 and, and you'll be fine. And it became very popular uh, and affordable since RTL SDR. Those are the ones for 20 bucks. It's just a USB TN, uh, t a TV receptor that has been hacked by the driver to be able to stream samples that can just receive. And all can listen, but some also can send, and that's the deal. You have the AcuRef by Michael Osman. Maybe some of the luckiest from you have taken this, uh, is, uh, um, uh, is training from the few days before. You have also the USRP from uh, Etus Research. Uh, Balin Sieber from the Etus Research will probably show you some stuff with, uh, with that card tomorrow on his, uh, on his briefing. Uh, this one has the particularity to, uh, to be dual channel. With AKRF, if you want to use a AKRF with our tool, you will need to have two cards because it solves duplex. So you will need one card for reception and one card for transmitting packets. With USRP, you have dual channel, so you can do full duplex with two channels at once. But our tool will just use one. And finally, you have the blade ref, which can do just receive and transmit on, a, on one card. Uh, so let me introduce GNU Radio and SCAPI, that are the ma two main components of our tool. And has anyone uh, in the audience play with GNU Radio? Uh, quite a lot. And with SCAPI? Almost the same. So GNU Radio, it's a framework. Uh, you have a click and play GUI, which is called GNU Radio Companion, where you can just assemble basic blocks. Those are the, the picture you can see on the right. You, you just have basic blocks that do specific, uh, specific computation and you just uh, connect them together to do what was uh, done in a DSP, for example, in a digital signal processor. You can extend it with the helper GRMod tool. You can extend it coding in Python or C++. And it supports a lot of SDR. Uh, at least the three we are, I was mentioning on the previous slide are fully supported. And you got a lot of great tutorials, plus my announcement training, like uh, I mentioned before. Basic blocks are also available to do blind signal analysis. It's pretty, uh, pretty neat because once, uh, once you're dealing with, uh, with an equipment, sometimes you know everything about uh, the radio protocol and the radio frequency it will, be, uh, it will communicate on, but sometimes you don't. So it's pretty, pretty awesome to have uh, some kind of blocks so you can just do try, try and uh, try, fail, try, succeed to, to bring your, uh, your graph working and receiving packets. And of course, it's open source. It's uh, GPLv3 licensed. So basically, it's just a signal processor that works like a Lego game. It's just as easy as, as plugging and connects blocks together. For SCAPI, it's an interactive packet manipulation program. This quote is taken from, the, from its website. Uh, it's used, I think, worldwide by pen testers because it's provided on a lot and a lot of Linux distribution. It's full Python code. 
and it, it's, uh, it's supported in Windows, Linux, Mac OS X. It's easy to extend, you just have to, to bring new Python classes and that's all. And it supports a lot of protocols right now. It has native fuzzing capabilities, so it can speed up your pen test when you're just uh, adding a protocol, you, just, you, you can use the, the basic fuzzing capabilities of Scapy and find a crash or thing like that. Uh, and you also have some high level tools available based on Scapy, for example, uh, like we will see later, automatons, and you also have external programs. So let's talk about our tool, Scapy Radio. How does it work? It works with Scapy, of course, a lot of layers implementing your packets for the given protocols. You have your software defined radio on the other side with GNU Radio Graph, the GSC. GSC is the file uh, from the picture with the blocks connected. This is the, the file produced by GNU Radio Companion, and it's the flow graph to process your packets. Scapy will fork to launch GNU Radio on the background, given uh, your uh, given your RF protocol you want to launch. Scapy uh, provides you a way, which is called a super socket, to change the physical layer. So that's what we are using right now. You have to provide an input socket and an output socket. So uh, we have implemented a class for that. And GNU Radio on the other side will provide you the, the exact same socket to connect them together. And we used UDP plus a custom header to identify the protocols for the communication. Uh, and uh, recently, we wanted to play with the, to dynamically change the behavior of the, the GNU Radio graph. And uh, GNU Radio provides an XML RPC server that can be leveraged to do that, to change variables, and it will reconfigure your graph dynamically. So we added that channel. Uh, why using a UDP socket? Well, first, na it's natively supported under GNU Radio. Uh, it also supports tune tap but this one requires root. Uh, and we didn't find any reason to, 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 pro, to, to have to run our tool under root, uh, root privileges account. So UDP was fine. And creating our own custom interface didn't sound a good idea. <laughs> uh, plus, it's easy to forward. If you think of that, you can have a, a, a computer running an SDR, and you can forward with Netcat, SoCat, or whatever you want, just routing UDP packets to another instance of Scapy that will just process the, the sample. Uh, and that led us to our latest functionality that is uh, it's not implemented yet. Uh, it could also ease us to build a cluster. Because sometimes with protocols, you, one SDR will not be sufficient. Sometimes you need multiple SDR to deal with high bandwidth uh, and high frequencies. So maybe you, without UDP can be helpful to, to ease the way to bring all the packets to one instance of, one instance of SCAPI and process that. Uh, our custom header is pretty simple right now. The first byte, uh, you have a total of eight bytes. The first byte is the protocol ID and seven bytes are reserved for future use. We plan to put there the channel, for example, the signal quality, or anything that needs a per packet use. Uh, why put the channel there is because sometimes on channel opening or whitening, uh, some protocols may use the channel number with algorithm to scramble the data. So it can be useful to, to be able to push the channel uh, just as a metadata of your packet so the SDR can know that it has to op on another channel to send this particular packet. Uh, and we have defined several protocols right now. Uh, zero is for invalid packets. Uh, most of the time, invalid CRC, uh, it's still useful when you develop things to, to, to just grab those packets. You have Z-Wave, you have uh, .15.4, which, uh, which is the lower protocol for ZigBee and 6 Lopen, et cetera. Uh, you have Bluetooth, low energy, WMBus, and Dash 7. And you still have a lot of room for other protocols. We are also providing you helpers, because each time you, uh, your new radio flow will receive a packet from the radio side, it will have to put that header in front of it. 
So we are providing basic helpers, uh, just a block to add a GR header and another block to strip it, respectively for the, the reception and the transmission of packets. You just have to put as a parameter the protocol ID and that's all. And it will add the, the eight bytes with seven zeros. What we're releasing? We're releasing the modified SCA version of SCAPI, SCAPI Radio, uh, with all the protocols we have, uh, we have developed and tested under uh, concrete equipment. Uh, and the corresponding new radio flow graphs for, ETUS, uh, for the, the ETUS board we have for the USLP2. Uh, just be careful, uh, well, if you want, for example, to modify the, uh, the new radio, pro the GSC files, to work with, uh, for example, the Acura for the Blader Ref, all you have to do is just run GNU Radio Companion, open them, and change the UHD sync and source block, which are dealing with the USRP, with GR Osmo SDR blocks, which can deal with a lot of uh, other ones. So it's just simple as uh, changing two blocks. And we're also releasing, releasing external. Uh, uh, external tools around Z-Wave, uh, passive Z-Wave discovering, so it will just sniff for packets and print out uh, Z-Wave networks that it can sniff, and all the equipments and, uh, involved in this uh, home automation network. And an example of Z-Wave automaton that we will demonstrate later. Uh, there's still known limitations. For example, uh, when you're dealing with uh, dynamic channel hopping, uh, for example, the USRP2 can deal with uh, 60, uh, 56 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, Blader Ref is, uh, is limited to 38 megahertz. So if you think about Bluetooth low energy that uses 80 megahertz wide, you're just running a bit short of uh, bandwidth. So that's one case where you need to have multiple uh, SDR. Uh, and you cannot configure easily your local oscillator to just hop from a frequency to another. So the main idea is to listen wide, for example, the, uh, the 56 megahertz uh, bandwidth of the USRP, and you do multiple channel filtering and frequency translating to process all the channel together at once, instead of just hopping from one channel to another and have one just single uh, flow line. Like I said, bandwidth limitation, both on radio side, like I, like I talked, and also on computer side, because USDR is uh, connected to the computer most of the time through USB port. So you also have sample limitation on that. Uh, one other limitation, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty annoying, is GNU Radio does not tell you when the graph is running. You just launch GNU Radio, and it takes time to configure USDR, initialize all the blocks that are involved in the graph, and you don't have feedback. So right now, we are uh, added to have outcoded out sleep timers to wait for a graph to be set up. But there's no workaround for now. Uh, the overall setup cannot be fast. If you think of that, your packet will go from Python to C++ to Python to UDP to Python. <laughs> Not very efficient in terms of, uh, of timing dependencies. <laughs> And it won't give you superpowers, but we may think of that later. <laughs> We're working on that. Uh, as a disclaimer, if you want to transmit, don't forget to check your local regulation, because unless you're living on a Faraday cage, it might be illegal, or you need a ham radio license to, to be able to transmit. Uh, well, no, let's talk about uh, a little bit about the, the devices we studied with, uh, with our bed, uh, with our tool. So first, we started to, to assess Z-Wave home automation devices. So the devices we had, we had a, a magnetic sensor, an alarm device, and a network controller. Uh, we used the open source software on a Raspberry Pi uh, based on Open Z-Wave. Unfortunately, Open Z-Wave does not support the cryptography which Z-Wave supports. Uh, so Everything was in clear, so the, the layer we provide you in SCAPI won't support uh, cryptography because we did not have packet to, to test that. Side findings we had over, over the devices. Well, the first one is pretty annoying. Uh, if you transmit too fast, it crashes the software. It's, just, it's not hardware related, it's just open Z, uh, the open Z-Wave stack that is a bit crappy. <laughs> so, 
we have to hard code timers again to just slow down the transmission. Even with going through Python, UDP, C++, et cetera, it's still too fast <laughs> for, uh, for OpenZ Wave. And at some point, we wanted to reverse the firmware too about the ASIC. So with the devices we're using uh, relied on Zensys uh, ASIC, the ZW301 ASIC more specifically. Zensys seems to be the leader providing ASIC for Z-Wave since it's the company that uh, brought the, the Z-Wave protocol. And it uses a kind of crappy SPI protocol. So we added support in the good fit from Travis Goodspeed. So it's right now on the firmware. If you just don't know the, the firmware uh, for, for your good fit, it will be on that. And if you want more detail about that, you can read uh, our company blog uh, that details everything we'd, uh, we've done on the um, uh, on the SPI protocol and uh, implementing the, the the protocol in the good fit. We also studied the Bluetooth low energy e electronic cigarette. This one is from a French company, so as French people, we we felt compelled to to analyze it. Uh, it uses uh, Texas Instruments uh, system on chip. The firmware is really heavily based on TI on TI examples. Uh, I think 80%, if not 90% of the code is taken from TI examples for the sending the packets and over the air firmware upgrades. So it's pretty easy to understand that. Uh, still, it was really difficult to edit that. Uh, right now, the Bluetooth low energy will only support the advertising because once the device is connected, it opts really, really fast to 40 channels over 80 megahertz bandwidth. So with one SDR, we weren't able to sniff all the packets and follow the, the connection. Uh, and more, uh, in addition to that, we had poor signal. Even uh, with an Obertus, and uh, being at two centimeters away from the cigarette, we were losing packets. Uh, so that's, uh, that was the time when uh, we thought about SDR clustering to get a wider spectrum to be able to analyze it. The potential threat we, we imagine on that, well, the first is privacy issues, still not a good, uh, a, good, uh, a good one because sniffing consumption of your electronic cigarette might not reveal a lot of things to, uh, on, your, uh, uh, on yourself. Maybe health issues because uh, this electronic cigarette can be configured from your iPhone to s select uh, between, uh, I think it's two parameters of nicotine so maybe we're, if we can override this and send you a huge dose of nicotine, it will be a bit dizzy. <laughs> uh, you also have firmware corruption over the air. Um, the protocol Texas Instrument provides in, in his examples uh, allows the firmware to be, to be ciphered. But they're not using it. <laughs> it's just, just sent over the air in clear text. So we, you can easily think about uh, writing a firmware uh, based on the same TI examples the, the manufacturer uh, has taken and corrupt the firmware. And with that, maybe you can cascade the attack. You can, maybe you can hack the, uh, the electronic cigarette to push a corrupted firmware and hack back the iPhone it is connected to automatically. We also studied XBUART bridges. Uh, those are uh, uh, .15.4 protocols based. Uh, as the name stated, it's not Zigbee. <laughs> so they're cheap and ready to use devices, just like your shield for an Arduino. You just plug it on your dev board and it's done. And therefore they're very popular to, to electronic engineers because they're ready to use. You have a, a bunch of software to deal with that. Uh, it's a custom protocol over .5.4, uh, .15.4, sorry. And we started the implementation of the layer, but uh, we, haven't, uh, we, have gone, we haven't gone through all the, all the specificities of the protocol, so, so far it's very rudimentary. Uh, and in fact, we discovered that uh, .15.4 is uh, used for 6 Lopan, ZigBee, and XB protocol at least. And it's really annoying because they thought about an underlayer, but they didn't give you uh, a way to determine the upper layer. You don't have a field stating, well, above this, you will find Zigbee. 
So you have to rely on heuristic algorithms, and it's pretty annoying. You, you cannot tell easily the, the upper-laying protocol. The roadmap of the development. Uh, well, the first line is, uh, has been striked because it's already done. That's the XML PC server. We also want to write a Wireshark plugin to be able to read back the, the PCAP that Scapy is able to read, and, uh, to read or write. Uh, also leverage the, our header to put uh, more metadata on it. And that function to handle a cluster of computer plus SDR. And uh, of course, add more protocols. So how to add stuff? You choose a protocol ID. You build your graph in your GNU Radio Companion to be able to read your, uh, your, to receive your packets. Then you create a packet sync, which is basically a state automaton that will check for access code and uh, remove invalid frames based most of the time on their CRC. And that prepends the GNU Radio header or use our, uh, our elbows. Test it. Then you invert the graph for the transmission part and you crea create a uh, custom preamble block. It will prepend preamble bytes that are uh, not part of the packet. And it will also add couples of null bytes at the end of the packet. You may wonder why it, uh, this is necessary. And in our tests, we found that GNU Radio just shuts down the local oscillator of your, uh, of your SDR too early, so the last bytes are always corrupted. By adding extra null bytes at the end, we just leverage that to, uh, to be able to, uh, to get the last byte correct. You test it again and you're done. Then you move to SCAPI. SCAPI is pretty simple. You just write your required layers. Be aware of predisect and post build because most of the time in computer based environments, you, you have your header and then your payload. On radio, your payload is, uh, of, is really often uh, taken between the, the header and the CRC. So for SCAPI, you just have to predisect your packet to bring back the CRC to the header so it can process packets smoothly. You test it and you're done. Then you have to tie together the GRC and SCAPI. You just put your GRC in your home directory dot SCAPI slash radio and that's all. The tool will find it. But for that, do not change the top underscore block value of your, which is the default one for your uh, graph name because the tool will, re will rely on that. You then edit scapi slash layer slash new radio dot py and you bind the layers together. And optionally, you can just add your protocol in the, in the list. It's just for auto loading, but it's not necessary. You update the install at scapi and of course, don't forget to send, a, to send us a pull request for your contribution. And now it's time for Anna to show you the demonstration and talk about that. Uh, First, a disclaimer, we have to apologize. We really plan to, to do a live demonstration on that, but we discovered quite lately that the Z-Wave automation system we were using relies on European frequencies, which is uh, 868 megahertz, and this band in the US is used for GSM. So if we were bringing the stuff and pouring it uh, on stage, it will just infringe a federal law. <laughs> So we moved back to video demonstration. <laughs> okay. So in the left side. Uh, 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 no, no. You hear me? Okay. Perfect. So in the left side, we have our alarm system with the door sensor, the, the controller based on the Raspberry Pi and uh, the OpenZW library, and the alarm itself. How does it work? When you open the door, it sends the frame to the controller, and the controller sends the frame to the alarm to turn on. And also, when you close the door, it sends the frame to the controller, and the controller sends the frame to the alarm to turn it off. Of course, in a real alarm, you need to enter a password to shut down the alarm, but for demo purpose, that makes it easier. So a short video of the functionment. Stem working. Okay. 
even with video you don't escape Murphy's law. The virtual machine is frozen. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we have to wait. So this is just a video of the stem working, nothing as special. Uh, I will continue in the attacker side. Yeah. You can do the PowerPoint also. Sorry. Sorry about that. So let's take a short break. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to restart the computer. VMware froze. Hmm? Yeah, uh, so the system is working when you open and start the alarm. So the attacks, we use the USRP and of course a Linux computer. And in the first time, we use the interactive shell. If you already use CAPI, you have a shell like Python and you can play, sniff packet, list, show, inject. So this is most for discovery. And also you can script that shell. And we also introduce Automaton. Automaton is a feature of SCAPI. It's well documented. And it's like a state machine. So you can do something like uh, I write a frame. When I have this frame, I launch another state. And this state I send another frame. In this example, when we receive a frame to turn on the alarm, you send a frame to turn it off. But OK. So I hope I can show that. It's coming back. Again, sorry about that. Not black screen. Yes, just the slides here. Okay, so no video because uh, we <laughs> have some trouble. So, like I said, in the attacker side, we only need the USAP. This is all points of the tools and software defined video, just an SDR and a Linux laptop. Some details about Automaton. Okay. Okay. So automaton, it's like a state machine. The first state is the initial state. We just, uh, in fact, launch the SDR on the wave. Like, you can see the switch radio protocol command. It's a command we add to SCAPI. So you just have to change the parameter for the way, uh, Zigbee if you want Zigbee. After that, we jump to the waiting state. Like, in name state, yeah. we just wait. We wait for the receive condition, and the receive condition is a switch on frame. This is a frame the controller sends to turn on the alarm. And when we, have, we have receive that, we do the action. And the action is to turn off the alarm. Oh, so later. And, and like Jean-Michel said, we have to set uh, a delay because we have some trouble with the Z-Wave controller if we, we inject frame too fast. Again, automaton are well documented in SCAPI documentation. And it's work uh, the same way regular SCAPI and in SCAPI radio. Okay. OK, so where to get the, 
to get this tool. Uh, all you require is uh, GNU Radio 3.7. Be careful because the 3.7.5, which is the, the upcoming development version, just breaks the UHD blocks. Um, in a pretty nasty way, uh, the, it's just the UHD sync, so the block that is responsible to transmit packets with a new SRP. Uh, the first uh, connection of this block used to be complex streams, so just the, the data that has to be sent. And they moved on the latest version to have two entries, but without, uh, without letting the first entry being the samples. Now it's the second one. So the graph just doesn't work anymore. You just have to to launch the graph and just and move the the arrow for the, to go to the second uh, to the second entry. Uh, New radio 3.7 is already provided in Kali Linux or Samurai STFU, and you also need a compatible SDR, of course. Then you just grab the code from our uh, our Bitbucket repository. Uh, you go into the directory, launch install. Uh, you don't need to launch it uh, as a root. It will automatically sudo when it needs to. And that's all. You, you have all you, uh, all you need to, to be able to deal with that. Thank you. If you have questions, you can go and right after the question, I will try to just move the setup to show you the videos. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Is there any question? You, uh, the tools will be online soon. Yeah, the, the tool will be on, will be put online right after the after the talk. And the uh, SCAPI modification, uh, I've talked to Philippe Bionli, which is a coworker, and it will merge it into SCAPI mainstream. So hopefully, all the SCAPI radio stuff will be available in the next Kelly Linux or things like that. Thank you. Thank you.